Okay, so thanks to the organizers for organizing this and uh, inviting me to speak. Um, so this morning I want to do three things. I want to uh, tell you about why I believe in firewalls, and then I'm going to tell you about why I don't believe in firewalls, <laughs> and then I'm going to uh, talk about some more basic science um, and uh, advertise a paper that appeared yesterday. Okay, so uh, so thing number oh there we go I brought the chalk already thing number one um, uh, so so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna review a basic picture um, of how the structure of of quantum states uh, in holographic theories seems to map over to uh, some space-time structure and try to see what that says uh, about firewalls in a particular context. Okay. Uh, so the starting point is to consider some holographic field theory and consider some state which has a gravity dual space-time uh, m. Okay. So one of the interesting things we can do um, on the field theory side, okay, so if, if we think about that quantum state in, in the field theory, um, there are many ways that we can uh, divide up the Hilbert space uh, for a field theory. And, um, and so corresponding to any one of these ways, if we can divide the Hilbert space into some tensor product structure, um, then we can calculate or define a reduced density matrix. So given the state and some uh, subsystem, we can define the reduced density matrix rho A. Okay. And so one of the things that um, that I and, and Raphael and various other uh, people, Makun and Veronica, Hubini, um, th have, have thought about uh, when we wrote papers last year. Uh, there were some earlier papers. Um, so one could ask the question, well, given this density matrix, which represents some partial information about the quantum state, um, what does that tell you about this um, space time? Okay. And at least in at least um, in the large end limit, uh, one can argue that you're able to reconstruct at least a part of that space time. So this allows you to, for example, if, if, you, have some, um, if you have some region A and you have the reduced density matrix for this spatial region A, then you could compute in the field theory any operator that is localized within the domain of dependence of this region A. Okay, so two-point functions, entanglement entropies, Wilson loops. What are you talking about regions on the boundary? Yeah, yeah, so this is a region on the boundary, yeah. Okay. And, and we know that using this information, uh, you get information about the bulk geometry. Okay, so, so there's this, uh, so, so we, could, we could define M rho to be Whatever region in the bulk it is that we could reconstruct from that density matrix. Yes, I, I prefer that. Yes. Um, so I'm not too worried about the infinities, and I think one could deal with these in the way that 
one usually deals with infinities, and that is that you could imagine having a uh, regularized field theory. Um, and w so when we're going back and forth between the field theory and the bulk, um, you know, if it, according to the standard ADS CFT lore, if, if I'm working with a field theory that is regularized uh, in some way, then that's going to affect, say, the geometry out at the, uh, at the UV region, the, the, far, um, the far part of the geometry close to the boundary. Um, but if I'm interested in, in the details of how the quantum state corresponds to some interior geometry, um, then that shouldn't be dependent on the regularization. So for example, if I'm, if I'm talking about um, an entanglement in entropy associated with that region, a, uh, that's infinite. Um, but if I, um, I, can, I can regularize it, or, or I could do some clever things like talk about the difference between the entanglement entropy of one state relative to the vacuum state. Um, and then, and then you, one can argue that this is going to be independent of your regularization. Well, yeah, I mean, there, there's a, so it depends on what the, um, what the cutoff is. So if, if I consider regions that are, um, right, so, so if, if I have a cutoff in the field theory and I want to, um, so here's, here's the IR part of the geometry, um, then if I have a cutoff in the field theory, then I certainly am not interested in regions that are very small if I want to learn about the geometry. So I, I'm going to be looking at regions um, in the field theory, for example, so that this extremal surface dips into the IR. So that, I mean, there is. Anyway, so you should probably keep. No, I, I don't. I don't necessarily want to. I don't necessarily want to restrict. The field, the states in the field theory. We well, when we talk about the LHC or I don't know. Yeah, well, that's another issue. I don't think he's talking about. But that. I mean, you know, is 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 the so is is a thermal state close to the vacuum? It's probably so. We talk about states where the dual would be some big black hole. I, I don't know if you'd call that. So it's it's close to the vac the, the short distance um, properties of the state are close to the vacuum. And I think that's all I that's all I need. Yeah. Okay. So I was I was defining this M rho as a part of space-time um, whose information is contained in rho and um, in the large n limit. Um, in the large n limit, I think we can we can uh, uh, this this can be sharply defined. And uh, so, so some example would be okay, uh, if if we just take the vacuum state of the CFT on the sphere. So you have a global ADS, and say you consider um, this would be a ball-shaped region in the CFT. So the domain of dependence is this diamond on the boundary, and then one can argue that um, the region M, uh, M rho here is, is basically is this wedge, um, which in this case turns out, to, uh, turns out to be the intersection of the, uh, 
causal past of the boundary diamond and the causal future of the boundary diamond. Um, um, in more complicated cases, uh, that may not be true, but this is, okay, so this is, I think most of the people that have thought about it ag agree that this would be the uh, dual of the density matrix for that um, hemisphere, for that ball-shaped region in the boundary. And uh, one, if, if you like, you could uh, consider the density matrix for the complement on, on the sphere of that ball, and then that would that would tell you about some other wedge-shaped region. Okay. And an important point is that if I have um, if I have a region A and its complement, and we know the density matrix for the region A, and we know the density matrix for the the complement, then we don't know the state. There's a lot of information left, that information is the information about how the two sides, how the two regions are entangled with one another. And correspondingly, in the space-time, there's this, there's this big region here um, in, the, in the future, in the past, that we don't know about if we know m rho and m uh, or rho a bar. And so it's natural to say that the information about these regions is contained in the way that the degrees of freedom in A are entangled with the degrees of freedom in A bar. Okay. Um, now, given this uh, density matrix, so we defined it as a reduced density matrix. But in general, in quantum mechanics, um, there's another place where density matrices show up, or another way to think about density matrices, and that is um, as defining some ensemble of pure states. So we can think about a pure state I um, in an ensemble rho uh, which we might have originally defined as a reduced density matrix. Okay. So it could it could be this it could be this reduced density matrix row. Okay, and so it's interesting to ask then um, what would be so because we have we have an ADS CFT correspondence there should be some um, some dual also for that state. And so then it's interesting to ask well what is the relationship between that uh, the the dual. Okay, so this would be. Um, So we could define the dual of that to be some space-time mi, whatever, whatever that is. Um, and I'm going to talk about the relationship between these space-times mi for the different i's in this ensemble and this thing m rho uh, shortly. But just for this example, let me, let me say that um, what, we, what uh, uh, Bartek, Czech, and uh, Joanna Karksmerich and my student Fernando and I argued um, last year was that if you take one of the microstate space times corresponding to the density matrix rho for the vacuum state, um, then these correspond to geometries that look exactly like the geometry of this wedge up until you get to the, uh, what would be the boundary of the wedge. And, and then the space-time just ends, and it's not not clear exactly. I can't tell you exactly how it ends. Um, uh, we said something like a we imagined something like a light-like uh, shock wave. Yeah. Uh, your state I only in region A. Yeah, the state. So the state I would be defined uh, as a pure state of the region A. Now. Could, one could, so yeah, so one thing I could do if I wanted to would be to consider a state I, A bar, tensor I, A. So a state with no entanglement between the two sides. And then what I'd say is there's this wedge that ends in some, um, some kind of shock wave. And then there, there would be some other, um, some other wedge that ends in some kind of shock wave. And there's just nothing outside of that. 
Okay, so we, you remove the, all the entanglement and then. Um, Well, I mean, again, if I if I work with a regularized, so it's it's true that uh, if I want to keep everything, then then um, there's something there's something sick about considering pure states. Um, that would be, but 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 again, we're seeing that even on the bulk side, there's something there's something um, there's something singular happening. So. Uh, Mm-hmm. Well, so well, uh, let me make the field theory statement. So the field theory statement is if I if I try to consider um, um, some field theory state some in a regularized way some field theory state which which is a product state and um, and then I tr- I calculate the stress energy tensor of this uh, state and I try to take the regulator away. Um, then I find that even in field theory, you get a singularity in the stress energy tensor here. Okay. So even in the field theory, if I try to define these states, you have something singular happening um, at the boundary of this wedge. And so, uh, uh, so it, seems, it seems natural to, to, um, to say that this should extend into the bulk, although I, I, don't, have, um, I don't know exactly what calculation I need to do. Yeah, can, I, can I just ask, are yeah. you assuming that every state has a classical geometry associated with it? Because I would have thought most no. states just don't have any. Um, Only special semi-classical states have any, have a classical geometry. Yeah, I'm, I'm not assuming that. But what we can show is that every one of these states, um, um, so, so if you compute almost any observable in the state I, then it's going to agree with the observable, uh, the same observable in the density matrix row A. And in particular, all of the observables that we use to, to ask about the geometry um, in the interior of that wedge are going to give the same answer for both. And so we, we conclude that, um, that for, uh, uh, sorry, I should say for typical states I, uh, for typical states I, then we do believe that there is a, a, a dual geometry at least up until here. And then at that point, I would say, well, maybe then you have to, to understand that boundary, probably you have to go beyond um, classical geometry. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's not, I mean, if you do thermal ADS, and I look at the one graviton state, there won't be a geometry associated to that, even though that's one of the states that appears in the thermal density. And that's because that's not a typical state. Yeah, absolutely. There could, there's, there certainly would be atypical states here where, where, where this is not relevant. This, uh, this, this here, or, or, or this. Yeah. Um, well, clearly. This, I mean, in the boundary, it has finite yeah, volume. Yeah. Is this an entropy? Is that right? Yeah. The entanglement entropy is infinite. Yeah. The entanglement entropy and is infinite because of the nodes of the. Uh, because of yeah, because of the UV, right. and that corresponds to the infinite area of this surface. That corresponds to this, but I think I would want to say that no such thing as a pure state exists. Well, I mean, again, again, I think if you want to, I, I completely agree that it's. Yeah. Well, let, let me move. I mean, when I when we get to talking about um, the these black holes, then then we will be talking about um, a pure state of one CFT. So this is this is an example. I mean, it's a contrived thing in this case to get to a pure state of one side, but I think you could regularize and take a limit and force it, and then you get. And then you get to um, then you get to something singular, both in the field theory and in the bulk. So, so, okay, so maybe. 
Yeah. Okay. So let's let's go on because this was only this was only an example, um, and I don't want to. I'm not going to use anything um, specific to this example. Okay. Okay. So so really all all I all I'm saying all I want to use here is that if we took a pure state in so we in this ensemble. And now you can imagine that this is this is some situation where you have um, where you have um, um, say a whole CFT and then and then the pure states are just states in that CFT and this could be the the canonical ensemble or the microcanonical ensemble um, that we can so so we could define this space time m rho and and the point is that I could also define this space time m i in the usual way. Yes. Um, would you agree that an EPR pair in the CFT, uh, would, you that an EPR pair in the CFT would be an atypical state in the way you just uh, defined it? An, an EPR pair in the CFT. Does your CFT have particles? Uh, maybe it's a CFT. That sounds pretty atypical for a CFT, just to have <laughs> particles that I could. Um, I mean, it, I, I don't need particles. I'm just talking about lumps of the fields of the CFT that are well separated and tangled with each other. Well, it depends. I, I didn't say what ensemble I was talking about. So we're okay. still, we're still, we're still in complete so generality. So general that here. okay. All right. Um, so maybe we can come the back. The point I want to make is, to is 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 very general, and then we can we can. Um, okay, so I'm, this is really just a setup that you have this duality. You could look at density matrices. Um, you you could define this corresponding space time as I've defined it, and then if this is an ensemble, you could also define these uh, these uh, pure states M I, and I probably should have skipped the example, but. Uh, but so far, this I don't think you can. This is just definitions, um, and uh, so so the other thing that you could do, uh, given a density matrix. So we started from a particular example of, uh, say, a holographic CFT, and we define this density matrix. Um, but the other thing you could do would be to consider other purifications of rho a. Okay, so so for a given density matrix, let's say it's the um, let's say it's the density matrix, the thermal density matrix for a CFT on a sphere. Um, so I c uh, and maybe that came from a state of two CFTs. Maybe it came from the thermofield double state of two CFTs. Well, I could consider that density matrix, and I could get it from a state three CFTs, or, or a CFT, um, a UN CFT, and a UN plus one CFT. There's a lot of ways I could get that density matrix. Um, and so, okay. And so if I have some other pure state psi of a, of a system, uh, which includes A as a subsystem, um, then I may well have some um, some geometry uh, dual to that. So that would be, say, some different space time um, with. But since we know that A is a subsystem and rho A is the density matrix and it's the same as this rho A, then that other space time should also include this this region M rho. Okay, so different space times with M rho. Okay, so, so those are the definitions. And now I want to write down a, something that uh, I hope is very plausible. Okay. 
So I think it's very plausible that M rho should be, if, if I have a family of these purifications and a family of space times uh, dual to the various purifications, um, I don't necessarily need to consider all of the possible purifications. But I want to say that M rho should be inside the region in common between duals of purifications of rho. Okay. Okay, so I'm emphasizing that this does not need to be any kind of complete set of possible purifications. It could be just two or three. Uh, if I choose any set of purifications and I know their gravity dual geometries, assuming they have them, then M rho should be included in the common region between those. So that's one side of a kind of inequality here. And the other side is that M rho is that if I consider uh, typical states in that ensemble, and I think of the region in common between the duals of typical pure states. So this intersection should be smaller than this. Okay. So if I have if I have a set of states which are which are typical, um, um, so so I mean specifically if I have this ensemble row and I choose a set of states um, for which uh, um, the, the remaining states are are a, a very small fraction, and if all of these states that I choose have some dual geometry uh, with an identical region. Then I would expect that region also to be in the dual of rho. Okay. Yeah. So if, yeah. So if, if I have a if I have a density matrix, um, a purification is just some pure state of of some larger system. So that if I restrict to the subsystem A, I get that density matrix. But it could be, so if, if I have a density matrix for one spin, I might have originally defined that density matrix as the reduced density matrix for a two-spin system, but it could well be also the reduced density matrix for a whole family of, of you know, n-spin systems. Okay. But okay. very much in particular, you're not assuming that the purification sits inside the original. Yeah, I'm certainly not assuming that it sits inside the original, uh, the original theory. Yeah. So I, I mean, I think in the context of ADS CFT, um, then if you want to build up the most general class of space times that you can, you need to consider uh, sew, sewing CFTs together in, in this way. Or you need to consider the possibility of of um, having various um, dual field theories. Okay. So this this is the this is my statement. What's the dual of this general purification? Well, I'm not assuming that the general purification has a dual. What I'm going to do is, is remember, all I need to do, all, all I need for this side is to choose a handful of examples where I know that there is a dual. So that's what I'm going to do in my, in my example. And certainly, the general purification should be something uh, you, you, could purify, you could purify a density matrix for some holographic CFT by adding some other field theory which is not at all holographic. And, uh, and then you could do it with a harmonic oscillator. So, um, so it's, I'm, I'm certainly not assuming that all of these purifications have a dual. Okay, okay so now I'm, now I'm going to do an example of this. And uh, and that will be hopefully relevant to. Well, you can think of it as adding some non-geometrical yeah. stuff. But M rho is still there. Yeah, I would say. 
So if I take all purifications, the region in common between the two is that? Well, so, sorry, no. I'm, I am saying that M rho would be in there. So, so say you have, say you have uh, the holographic part, and you can do all these calculations with observables just restricted to that part, and they tell you a certain dual geometry, and then there's this harmonic oscillator. Then you can, in that theory, consider observables involving the harmonic oscillator degrees of freedom. And I mean, maybe you could force some kind of dual interpretation that is completely singular, but, but I could draw the picture like this, where, where there's, there's a geometrical part and then something else. But I, I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm not going to consider anything so exotic. Okay. So my example. Okay. So I want to consider uh, the thermal density matrix for a conformal field theory on a sphere, and I want to consider purifications. To a pair of CFTs, and one can write the most general purification in that system as okay um, as an arbitrary unitary operator tensored with the identity acting on the thermofield double state which is defined in the usual way. So these are two identical CFTs? These are two identical. In my example, they're two identical CFTs. Okay. So now I'm just going to write this inequality for my example. Okay. So this says that the region in common between black hole microstate it's between a typical black hole microstate geometries I don't even need the middle part uh, is contained in the region in common between duels of these guys. And so, so the first example we could consider is the actual thermofield double state, okay, which is the maximally extended ADS black hole geometry. Okay, so the region in common between these typical uh, black hole microstate geometries should be contained in this. I think we all agree with that. Um, but then I can consider another example, and I'm going to choose U to be some operator that's nearly local, say, in, in the, the left-hand CFT. So I, l let me say that I'm going to choose A to be this this side. Okay, so I, I can choose U to be some operator um, that creates something um, that, that propagates through here and would be visible behind the horizon. Um, Steve and Douglas have have argued recently that you you don't need to add very much um, in order to have something very uh, very um, dramatic there. So I, I just need to consider uh, a few more examples like that. And um, as soon as I do that, then the region in common between the duals of these things goes right down to this region outside the horizon. Okay. So if we, if we accept that, then the region in common between typical black hole microstate geometries um, cannot be larger than the region exterior to the horizon. Yeah. 
after a few after a few scrambling times, it has died completely, right? Yeah, that, that's true. So I, I probably want to consider um, a, a family of views where I send stuff in at all sorts of different times. So I can consider I get one U that's in here, another U that sends it in at an earlier time, and another U that sends it in at an earlier time. So I consider this this series Maybe of. Maybe last this question. Yeah. Stanford talk, but um, isn't it true that when you try to send it earlier and earlier, the, the horizons then separate, and the amount of time that uh, you have the perturbation on the right is fixed? That, I didn't think that's true. As I'm, I think as long as I'm just sending one particle in, then it stays close to the, this horizon. I did this, well, I did this calculation in, in a simple, probably in the three-dimensional context. Is that, yeah. is that accurate? Yeah, you could get it sort of later by just boosting the original perturbation. Yeah. So if, when the perturbation is fairly early, it lasts for a certain time or something from the right horizon. Now we just boost the entire Yeah, yeah that's good. That's good. Yeah. Well, what about the white hole region? Isn't that common to? This, this year. The white hole. No, the, the thing in the past. Oh, this. Bottom. That, that well, much. no, I, because I could consider, um, I mean, when, when I consider a unitary operator, really it probably, do, it probably affects both the, so, so there's, there's nothing that, if, if I consider some local operator, um, it, it probably process. perturbs everything here as well. Yeah. A microphone? Um, yeah, just uh, so I understand the logic here. Um, first of all, the, the, the second CFT also has a dual geometry, right? Both CFTs, you assume, have a dual yeah. geometry? Yeah, so in this example. Right. Uh, but your notion of having this common denominator space-time uh, is should sort of be a lower bound on the space-time that could correspond to the ensemble, or is it is it actually an upper bound? Uh, meaning, is it, the, is, it the, is it the largest space-time I could associate it to it, or is it the smallest space-time I could associate it to it? So this M rho should be the space-time, um, the M rho should be the space-time um, that I could reconstruct using knowledge of rho. So it better be in... Yeah, but is, is M rho just a, a subspace of the, the space that one could in principle reconstruct, or is it the whole space that one should uh, be, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, should I view your M row as sort of yeah. an upper bound on, on how much geometry I can extract from it, or should I view it as a lower bound? I think I, I think I should view it as a lower bound. So in principle, one could indeed extract more than your M row. No, I, well, I mean, I think it's sharply defined, actually. So it's, it's, if there were more that you could reconstruct, then I would include it. So, now uh, an, an example is just the Unruh state itself, for example, right? So I take the Unruh state, but I, I, I would view it as a, as an ensemble of the individual components, which are the pure energy states. Mm -hmm. A pure energy state we know is singular, whereas the Unruh state we know is regular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so how would you deal with that situation? Well, but that, that's sort of a question. That's, that's a question of, of what happens at the horizon. But, but in the end, I think we don't need, essentially all we need is the outside part of this inequality. I, so, yeah. um, so in fact, I, agree. I think if, what you if, need if, to if you're, if you're sitting in just on one of the two sides, then it doesn't make much of yeah. a difference. Right. Um, let me, I mean, I, I should get on to, to why you might argue with this. Well, can I, sorry, can yeah. I just ask a basic question, which is, are you saying this is what you can re reconstruct from a subset of field theory information or from all the field theory? You get, you get anything that you want as long as you work with observables that are restricted to A and its domain of dependence. Okay, so I thought so, there was a difference between these causal domains and ones you probed with Ryu Takinagi and all of that. How does that fit into this? Well, so yeah, so that's right. I'm I'm assuming that you get Ryu Takinagi, you get correlators, you get Wilson lines. Uh, we argued that 
if you use all of these things, then you can generally see more than just the causal domain. So, um, so in some examples, say where there's matter inside ADS, then I think Ruchak Nagi, for example, gives you a little bit more than just the, the causal domain. Okay, well, <laughs> thank you. So, okay, so let, let me, so, so far the message is that this rather plausible relation seems to be telling me directly that if I think about the typical states in this ensemble, these typical black hole states, um, that there is not some region past the horizon that's going to be in common with all of these things. So I think the, the conventional viewpoint would have been that, that if I take uh, a typical high energy state of a single CFT and I'm, I'm in the bulk uh, and I fall through the horizon, then I'm going to see some regular smooth space time. I, I guess in particular, we would have said it's, it's, this, it's part of this space time that's sitting here in the in the eternal black hole geometry. So we would have said that, that uh, typical states, typical black hole states would include this region outside the horizon. That would all be identical. And that I'm not going to tell the difference between the different microstates the instant I fall behind the horizon. Okay. But if that's true, that, that's in conflict with this. If it's, if it's not possible to tell the difference between the microstates the instant I fall behind the horizon, then there would be some region in common that would be part of the region in common here. And this argument has just said that that region in common cannot include any of this stuff behind the horizon. Well, so, yeah, so I, I, at that level of detail, it's hard to say you know, my error bar is probably Planck. I, can't, I probably can't get it uh, below Planck length. Uh, there might be a, I think there's a fundamental physical law that your error bar is going to never be yeah, smaller than that. Uh, but yeah, let me let me keep going. Let me just say why. Okay, let me let me say why you might um, argue. I'll, I'll point to a part of this um, because so. So this is why I might believe in firewalls for these for these typical uh, states of ADS. Um, let me say a reason why, if, if I had to pick the, the place where this can go wrong, um, let me tell you where it is. Okay. Um, so it's, I guess it's here. And the reason that I would say it's here is if I try to prove this, okay, then I find myself trying to say things like, um, um, let's choose some operator in the CFT that would tell us about this common region. Some some operator that would uh, would be able to tell me that there's this particular patch of space time behind the horizon. Okay. So I would say, well, choose that operator in the CFT, and because there's this region in common between all these typical um, states, um, that operator will have the same value for all these states. And therefore, because they're typical, that operator is going to have the same value um, in, the, um, in the geometry, uh, in, the, in the ensemble. Okay. And, and therefore, the smooth region would be there in the ensemble as well. So that's, that's how I would um, try to construct uh, an argument for that. Um, so a way that that could fail is, if the operator that told you about this region behind the horizon, if somehow that operator is different for every different state. So again, it gets back to this slightly yucky um, uh, state-dependent um, idea. Uh, uh, but you know, if, if if that's the way it works, then then I don't. You know, then then the argument. Uh, 
I have a hard time making that argument sharp. Um, then, it, then it's just um, it's just sort of a plausibility argument um, that I can't um, that I can't make sharp uh, with with any um, direct CFT proof. So, so that would be my uh, my my guess for um, the possible way that this could fail um, if if it fails. There is another possible way that I'll just point out okay. briefly, and you know what I'm going to say, which yeah. is that you've, your yeah. logic here, especially on this upper bound, yeah. sort of assumes that the bulk boundary map is unique, I think. And if you had a context like CFT cross CFT, where you had a reason to believe that, for example, as Aaron Wall and I argued, there might be multiple bulk boundary maps in that context, then you might worry that you've you, your intersection there is doing too much, that you're comparing things from different bulk boundary maps and getting too tight of an answer. Mm -hmm. OK, so yeah, so I just said that was my, this was my favorite way that it could fail. Now, and I, and I, I believe that you agreed with me that the super selection sectors were not absolutely necessary if we, if we said that, um, so if we believe that uh, for, these, for these typical states, the geometry just ends here at the horizon, um, then I think your argument for the super selection sectors um, doesn't, doesn't necessarily go through. I if believe you agree. If there are strong enough firewalls, you don't need super selection yes. sectors. Yes, okay. Yes. Hi, just want to understand your, your message, basically. Okay. Uh, you s suppose it's CFD. The CFT state is pure yes. if you formed from initial state, say collapse black hole. And, and if that pure state, which is a particular purification of raw, yes. is a special, then if that's the case, then it may, need not, it, may not, it may not have firewall. So you're saying that just a typical purification of raw have a firewall, but that does not mean that the, all the reasonable collapse form black hole has a firewall. You're not saying that, right? That's right. So, okay. so well, in particular, um, there's nothing here that says that if I take a shell of matter in ADS and it collapses and forms a black hole, that there can't be a smooth region behind the horizon uh, for some time. Yeah, because it could be because special. That's not a typical. I mean, so if I look at an atypical state. Pardon? Once it collapses and there is a region behind the horizon, everything is in the future. How can it come backwards in time? It cannot be smooth for some time. I mean, if it collapses and it forms a horizon, and then there is a region for a while, then you know, we said whatever happens after that cannot go backwards in time, or you know, okay, I, uh, there should be some mechanism for that. But you know, essentially, there is no. Once you form right. the shell, yeah, I see, I see the what horizon, you're I see what you know, you're essentially, the, whatever happens after it's, it, it cannot affect it well, anymore. Well, the seeds of that thing could have. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. <laughs> the, imp the important thing of there was that these these shell geometries are not um, and are dynamics not the typical may be thing. Dynamics may be special. Yeah. Let me. Okay. So all right. In the all right. So so let me quickly um, now. So I, I let me say that. I th so I think one possible. This is a very interesting question then to ask about um, what about your actual black holes that are formed from collapse that that evaporate. Um, I think a possibility is that these special, uh, pure, typical states of a single CFT, um, if maybe they have, the, it's possible that they have the firewalls, but um, still, when you, when you ask about ordinary collapsed black holes in uh, at flat space or small black holes, um, I don't have a similar similar argument that they have. Uh, Firewalls, and in particular, now I will uh, give an example that suggests to me that you can avoid the firewalls, um, uh, starting from one of these black holes that I'm saying plausibly do have firewalls, and then forcing it to uh, evaporate. So, so let me quickly go through that uh, example, uh, which is closely related to the observations of Maldacena and Suskind. And then I'll give my second talk in the last two minutes. <laughs> okay, so okay, so I'm going to start with a, C, a CFT with a, a black hole inside. So this is going to be a um, a pure state of one CFT. And then what I want to do is actually consider another CFT. So I want to make this black hole evaporate somehow. 
um, and see what happens. So I want to I want to take another CFT. I'm going to start that in the vacuum state. And now what I'm going to do is, so these are these CFTs are on some balls, uh, living in a lab, as Lenny and Juan uh, discussed. And now I want to connect them with a wire. And what happens then is that the boundary conditions, so in, from the bulk point of view, the boundary conditions are changed now so that you could actually have radiation leaking out at this asymptotic region um, corresponding to that place. I could put lots of wires so that it's spherically symmetric. Um, so we have, we have radiation leaking out, and the radiation leaks into here. So this CFT is like a bottle for the Hawking radiation. Okay. And so what happens eventually is that we have lots of radiation filling up this space, forms a black hole. Okay. And then if I want, I could remove the wire. Okay. So this state then evolves to something that looks like this. Um, And if I wait a long time and, and, and uh, things are typical, this is going to be maximally entangled um, given the constraints of energy conservation. Okay. Okay, so this is, this is what happens generically. I ended up with this, with this state where the original black hole system is now maximally entangled with another system. Uh, which is really it's Hawking radiation. Okay. So which is, which is uh, it's Hawking radiation trapped in the second CFT. Okay, but nevertheless maximally entangled with the Hawking radiation. Okay, so it sounds like it sounds like the um, conditions that amps start with in uh, in their original argument. Okay, but. So the, the point is that I, I don't see any reason in particular why in some special examples this state couldn't be exactly the thermofield double state. Okay, so we could arrange this. Okay. And if it is, then a lot of us believe that the, the full dual geometry is this extended black hole geometry. So even if there was a firewall here initially, okay, um, if we wait and things have, and if we've been lucky and, and you have this thermofield double state, uh, then we should be able to fall through the horizon and not see a firewall. Okay. Um, so, th so this is, of course, a finely tuned example. Um, but if I, but if I'm trying to find a, a counterexample um, where I have the conditions of amps um, satisfied and I don't have a firewall, um, then to me this seems uh, it seems sufficient to do that. Yeah. I guess I'm confused by what the lesson is. It's fine-tuned, as you say. I mean, I mean, we we, we yeah. expect that there are. I mean, if firewalls are generic, there are still states that don't have them, and you found a very non-generic state well, that doesn't okay, have. So, them. so what I, is the moral exactly? Okay. So no. So I thought the I thought the I thought your argument um, was that assuming this maximal entanglement with the Hawking radiation, um, then so you know, I thought it was I thought it wasn't just that. You might have a firewall. I thought that. So I, I, you could correct me, but I, I thought that your argument originally was that there must be a firewall, given that uh, it's an old black hole that's maximally entangled. Once you identify the radiation with the interior. Pardon? Once you identify, that was before you identified the radiation with the interior. That's before you were trying to do identification of the type that we're doing. And all the energy discussion after acting. Okay, so. Now, now so That's not 
OK, well, OK, so let, let me just, OK, I'm not, but, OK, so I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure if it's, if it's accepted that, so actually, Joe, would you, I'm not sure if, would, would you say that the original arguments, OK, all right. Maybe this is going a bit against the grain, yeah. but it seems that you've assumed here that entanglement is sufficient to create geometry. And I know no. that that's been. I've only, yeah, I've only talked said, about one state. Well. So I'm just so trying to construct the, one if example. If I have the thermal field double, so, then I have that geometry. Yes, I am assuming and, that this is the dual of the thermal field double. Yeah, so that's a, isn't that a pretty big assumption? Well, I mean, we, we can compute uh, all sorts of correlators in the thermal field double and apply the standard ADS CFT dictionary, and you get out that geometry. I mean, we've, we've studied that for uh, years. Well, okay. I, so I, I think I if there's think one really example of a CFT yeah. construction that we believe doesn't have a firewall, that would be it. But, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd like to make a slightly off-topic comment, but you've you've continually been talking about typical things. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think is really important mm -hmm. and which almost never appears in these discussion is the fact that if you believe in the covariant entropy bound and you believe in the way particles behave and create black holes, you know that a typical state that you can describe in terms of particles has much less entropy than the maximal entropy mm -hmm. you would associate with mm -hmm. some finite region of space-time. Mm -hmm. And so it is a very special state. Mm -hmm. Any state that, any state whatsoever, mm -hmm. even in Minkowski space-time, mm -hmm. that ha you can describe mm -hmm. in terms of particles is a very special mm -hmm. state of that region of Minkowski space-time. Mm -hmm. And so I think all of these arguments of typicality fall down on that point. Okay, but well, I mean, look, that ties into the last thing I was going to say here. Um, so this is this is an example where you've started with something atypical, you've let it evolve, and somehow you are not required to have the firewall. Um, so, so to me, that's sort of the the, the ray of of hope in in the sense that um, now if I go to the case of black holes formed from collapse in Minkowski space, as you're describing. And then I let them evaporate naturally. Okay. Um, well, maybe that's like, so I don't have anything to say that that wouldn't be like this case. So, so maybe the natural dynamics of a situation where you start with one of your um, collapse states and then let it evaporate naturally, um, maybe that's in this class of things that um, that end up without a firewall. Okay, so so I, the previous things I were talking about, I can't apply them to say that I can't make the argument that that those things have firewalls, and this suggests that there are some cases where you have something it evaporates and there's no firewall. Um, so to me, the the door is still open for um, for See, I, I think collapse states. What, to have. what we know for sure about a black hole is that if I take a a state that I can describe in terms of particles inside the horizon of a black hole, it doesn't remain in a state that can be described by particles mm -hmm. for very long. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we're only arguing about how long that is. Mm -hmm. So a typical state of that system, absolutely for sure, is singular. Mm -hmm. And you might call it, say it has a firewall or whatever singularity you want. The real question is, when you form the black hole, if you formed it in the normal mm -hmm. way, the usual space-time picture suggests that there's a very tiny subset of the possible states of the interior that can propagate for a finite time of order of the Schwarzschild radius before they become mixed up and become a typical state. And, 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 and most of the arguments that I hear about the firewall just don't speak to that point at all. They but all it's talk it's about it's typical states. Mm -hmm. 
So it doesn't matter if you can make a black hole in e to the a over four way, or e to the a to the three quarter way. That, that's that's assuming yeah. there are no. No, this is this is the only the example that I know. But so so then it's a big question of of if I look at this class of states, how many of them? So I, th I mean, you know, this is an open question. If I look at this class of states, how many of those ones have um, have smooth geometry behind the horizon, and how many of them don't? But I mean, Don and I have shown that well, they you, don't have a short they have a short because they don't have Yeah. The, okay, but good, good. But so I agree with I agree with your arguments, but. Could they have a long wormhole and some space time behind the horizon? Yeah. Yeah. So, so all you need is a little bit of space behind one horizon, and it doesn't have to, you know, it could be Disneyland in between, and I don't know, and another. Trey, but there are some. Easily understood examples where, for ex well, exact solutions that are known, exact gravity solutions, where the wormhole is bigger. While that's true, and I suspect I know which examples you're talking about, there are long wormholes in the sense that if you send something in from one side, it doesn't even get near the other horizon. Yes. Okay. Good. But yeah, they I, are long in this in this way, I'm, and that's that sounds good. I, I, I think that yeah, I think the mutual for, information for is not necessarily the important thing here. Can can I um, can I take three minutes uh, and and say just advertise something that I could back up with equations? And I won't. I promise not to write any equations. I I spent. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So, um, so I just want I I just wanted to mention this paper that came out yesterday, with, and this is with my postdoc Nima Lashkari and my student uh, Mike McDermott, um, and and this is some work that builds on stuff Takinagi uh, and collaborators and Rob and collaborators have been doing. Um, so, but I, I think it's quite interesting and maybe eventually useful for some of these applied questions. Um, uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's on the topic of, of geometry from entanglement and actually gravity from entanglement. Um, so there's a thing you can prove about any CFT, okay, which is that if you start with the vacuum state and you consider any perturbation to that state, doesn't matter, doesn't matter what perturbation, so some small perturbation, um, then for any ball-shaped region okay, in any, in any uh, reference frame, so the entanglement entropy of that region relative to the vacuum state, which is a finite quantity, so the change in entanglement entropy, um, turns out to be equal, as, as proven by these guys, to the change in energy Define in a, in a special way. So you could call it the hyperbolic energy. It's this thing, um, integral of the stress energy tensor times this function on the ball. Um, it's the energy that you'd get if you mapped the domain of the dependence of this ball to hyperbolic space times time. So it's the generator of, of time translations in that system after the conformal map. Okay. What fits is the units? This is not, uh, this, this is defined to be dimensionless. So, the, so the, the R, the size of the region, is what fixes the units relative to the uh, usual. Okay, so this, so you have this relation, um, which, which you prove um, in the same way that you would prove the first law of thermodynamics. Okay. Um, but it's complete. It's not a. Th it's not really a thermodynamic relation because it's, it's completely general for any perturbation, and we're not assuming equilibrium. And the nice thing about entanglement entropies is that they could always be defined. Um, so that's true for any CFT. D. Okay. So um, now I want to apply this. Now I want to think about a, a holographic CFT and assume that this perturbed state is dual to some pertur perturbation of ADS. So it's we're, we're now in a in a holographic setting. So there's so we we assume there's some uh, metric. Dual to describing the geometry dual to that state, and that metric is going to be of the form G ADS plus H. Okay. 
With Ryu Takenagi, you can give a geometrical interpretation to ds. And with this usual connection between stress energy and um, the asymptotic form of the metric, you could give a geometric ter interpretation for DE. Okay. So using these elements, then this thing that you can prove in the CFT implies a constraint on the dual geometry. Okay. And it turns out that, um, so what we can show is that that constraint is exactly that let me, so that constraint, if you apply it in all the Lorentz frames, um, is exactly that H, or that this metric satisfies Einstein's equations um, to, to linear order in H. Okay. So, uh, so Rob et al. proved, I guess, this direction, that if you have, that, that if you have examples of uh, metrics that satisfy Einstein's equations, uh, you can check that, in fact, ds equals de. But then, it, then uh, it turns out that you're able to prove that this relation um, on its own, together with these elements of the dictionary, actually actually imply um, Einstein's equations. Okay. Um, and then related to that, so part of the, I guess the nicest proof of that is that it turns out that there's some, some nice explicit map where if you give me the entanglement entropies for all of these ball-shaped regions in all the, the Lorentz frames, um, you can write down a generalization of something that's called the radon transform, um, in the, or the hyperbolic radon transform. Um, and that will give you um, the, the perturbation of the metric H, uh, sort of directly in terms of, in terms of this. Anyway, so that's the advertisement um, for, for our paper from last night. And uh, I encourage you to, to have a look. And, uh, and I'd love to discuss that with people. Is capital H the same as little h? Uh, it, yeah, in our, in our paper, H, capital H is Z to the, or is, is H over Z to the D, but yes. Uh, yeah. So what is the minimal information needs to construct geometry from entanglement? Do, do you need the say so one-on-one entropy for all possible surfaces or the, all the eigenvalues of this? Or, or so, the, so this is saying that it's linearized question. <laughs> what you need is the entanglement entropy for all the ball-shaped regions that's in true. all the Lorentz frames. Uh, so, so, th so that's where I have a question. Uh, uh, one, can cons one can construct uh, two different CFTs, which uh, uh, can construct two completely different CFTs have the same central charge, so the same entanglement entropy for all. Uh, so that if I, uh, I'm trying to understand what is a one-to-one -one correspondence here. So yeah, these two CFTs presumably correspond to two different geometries, but their entropies have. Well, same. yeah, I mean, let me, let me just say that this, so at this linearized level, um, and here I'm just talking about the, the, the metric components, mm -hmm. including the radial direction and the field theory direction. Um, so there could, so this is, this is in some sense a universal, um, Sec linearized sector of, uh -huh. of the bulk. And there could well be different examples that have other fields. Um, but to linearized order, if those other fields are excited, um, uh, then they don't affect, they don't affect uh, these components of the metric. So it's not, Actually, it's not yeah, one-to-one one I'm enough. gonna have to stop this, sorry. Um, we're gonna take a very brief break, uh, about five minutes, and then uh, we're gonna have to move on to, okay. uh, to Lenny's talk. So you can take the break. Okay.